Hello and welcome to the 2020 Autocar Christmas Road Test. Not much of a reveal here, is there? It is the Goodyear blimp. Now, first things first, not technically a blimp. I am in a hangar in a place called Friedrichshafen, which is on the shores of Lake Constance in southern Germany. And Friedrichshafen is probably the world center of uh, airship design. And I'm at the home of a company called Zeppelin, who used to make airships in the 20s and 30s and started again in the 1990s. Now, those old airships were had a rigid frame inside them and a blimp technically has no rigid frame inside it it is just a balloon this which is actually a zeppelin nt for new technology is a kind of hybrid um, of the two it has an outer envelope or hull which is well basically sort of inflatable mattress stroke bouncy castle sort of material and inside that is there is a trellis of aluminium uh, running longitudinally down this entire 75 meter length and that is joined with cross members made of carbon fibre and triangulated out of carbon fibre and between them they give structure to what is containing seven and a half thousand cubic metres of helium. By the way a cubic metre of helium if you buy it costs about 20 to 23 euros so it costs about 175 grand to fill it with helium. It's powered by three very normal engines. They're Lycoming engines off the shelf, four cylinder, flat four, boxer engines, air-cooled. Each one makes around 200 horsepower. So you're looking at a structure that's 75 meters long that weighs, all of the actual, all of the actual kit inside it weighs seven and a half tons, and it's powered by 600 horsepower. And that is because each metric cubed, meter cubed of helium can lift approximately one kilogram, so seven and a half tons, seven and a half thousand cubic meters of helium, you end up with something which is roughly in equilibrium with gravity, but not quite totally in equilibrium. This is not a lighter than airship, it is a slightly heavier than airship to the tune typically of around three to four hundred kilograms, depending on passengers and fuel and ballast and so on and so forth. So what makes it take off the ground? Well, there are a few things. First is the fact that each of these engines does very specific things. The one at the back has two propellers. One faces that way most of the time and it drives the ship forwards, but if you change the pitch, it could also pull it backwards and it can be tilted through 90 degrees so it can actually pull the ship down or push it up. To the side of that is a different one facing sideways, a bit like an air, uh, a helicopter tail rotor. It spins all the time at the same speed as the one facing backwards, but if you change the pitch, you can then have it neutral or you could you can transfer the uh, yaw that way. Each of the engines at the front typically faces forwards during normal flight but you can tilt it through up to 120 degrees and again changing the pitch of the blades can make it go backwards, forwards, whatever. But because this is ever so slightly heavier than air, 95-97% of its lift will come from the helium. The rest of it comes from aerodynamic lift which means once you get a bit of speed up and over 20 knots, you start to get a bit of speed over the control surfaces at the back. You can start to get a bit of lift, a bit of lift, sorry, a bit of nose up angle of attack on it. And as you go through the air and this thing can cruise at about 65 knots, then you start to get a bit of lift that way. And the more angle of attack you get, the more it wants to rise and fall. So to help with that, I said it's full of helium. It's tr that's true. But there are also two balanades, ballon ballonars, depending on where you're from, big bags full of air, normal air, of which that is a vent to let stuff out. There's one in front of me to let stuff out and you can also pump stuff in. So there's a huge one at the back, and, uh, right above me, and there's also one um, at the front. And if you want to change the pitch of the aircraft, say you want more nose up, you start pumping air into this one and out of that one, and then the helium shifts to the front, helium's lighter, and away you go. So in a normal condition where there's not much load on board, uh, sort of 200 and three, two to 300 kilos of, of load downwards, you might go along at sort of one degree up angle at the front. If it's heavily laden, then you might go along with as much as eight or nine degrees at the front. And it's that uh, that can help the speed with which this rises and falls. So it might go at typically 300 meters above ground, but it can go much higher than that. It can go sort of two and a half thousand, three thousand meters above 
above ground and the speed by which you get air in and out of those balonades can dictate how fast it rises and falls. It can climb it up to about 1,000 feet a minute and it can descend by up to 1,200 feet a minute. The reason it needs to do that is because of Civil Aviation Authority things say it has to go that fast because it will be flying around airspace which is used by commercial aircraft and if it needs to get out of the way, it needs to get out of the way. This is the gondola at the front. It can carry up to 14 people. It has two crew and you might have noticed there's some ambient noise going on around me. The reason is that this airship is going through its 100 hour scheduled maintenance because tomorrow it flies to Le Mans to spend the weekend filming and advertising Goodyear at Le Mans. The great thing about that is we're going to be on board when it goes. Right, so before we fly, they've given me an overview of this cockpit very kindly, so I shall give one to you and give you a, a rough idea of what does what and where. So in front of me is a big sort of avionics suite, so everything from GPS through to radar systems and artificial horizons with sort of redundancies both sides. And then there's a kind of monitoring system for uh, all of this ship's various electrical, engine, fuel and other systems. That's all on the big screen in front of me. Above me, you'll see these big levers for air valves and helium valves. Now, when you're in flight, typically, these things are supposed to work automatically, the air valves, but if you need to, there is one valve for the uh, front balonade and there's two for the large one at the rear. The helium valves, you may not need to touch them because you don't really want to let helium out of this thing if you have to, but in some sort of hot or high conditions, if the helium's expanding too much for the, for the, for the envelope, you may want to let a little bit out. Above that is a load of sort of check systems, so everything from engine start through to a radio for the ground crew through to electrical power, fuel management system, all of the circuit breakers, they are all up there. So let's move down though to these big levers here, which control the mixture and the RPM for the engines. They go left, aft, right on all of these levers, except for these two thrust levers, which control the pitch of the um, propellers, of which there are two here for the front pair and then there's one for the rear. Now what you'll notice I'm sitting here there are no pedals as there is on a usual plane. If you are going above about 20 knots you get airflow over the rudders and you get aerodynamic control. So when you move the lever to the left the rudders change, turn to the left to the right likewise you pitch the nose down by pushing forwards and pull up by going back. However at low speeds there's no airflow over those rudders so none of that works. So what you do is you pull the swivel for the rear rotor and as it pulls down to the R position, as it goes through 60 degrees, what this lever does is it takes on the control, as well as doing the rudders, even though they're not going to do anything, it takes on the control for the pitch of the propellers. So if you want to, to rotate left, you would pull left. That'll change the rotation of the lateral propeller on the rear, start giving you a yaw movement uh, counterclockwise and likewise the other way, and also it will change the pitch of the, the downward facing rear propeller and the other propellers to make you go up and down. So at high speeds you're doing aerodynamic control, at low speeds you're doing control with the thrusters but actually it would be best I think if we saw a professional do it in action. Okay so welcome to the gondola of the Goodyear blimp where it is a lovely day. It's swaying ever so slightly isn't it? The pilots tell me that passengers don't get airsick I get seasick, and well, I kind of see what they mean. There's sort of wind going past the window very gently. There's two opening windows in here. And of course, we're not high enough to be pressurized or anything. We're cruising about 300 uh, meters or so. And it's a beautiful day, which I'll come back to in a moment. What you will see is 14 uh, seats in here, because quite often these are used for sightseeing. But this makes a brilliant viewing platform for anything. That monitor is for a uh, high resolution TV camera, which will be filming the Le Mans race this weekend. But scientific uh, experiments are also done from these things, meteorological experiments, all kinds of things. And they make great low height, low speed viewing platforms, very stable viewing platforms um, for that reason. So normally these 14 seats would have passengers in them taking in the sights, including at the loo with the view, but there are no passengers ready today. We've just got some kit. So there is a 700 litre tank of water, so 700 kilos beneath my feet. And depending on the load uh, on the airship, the pilot will pull a lever and let out a certain amount of water to get the ship in trim before we take off. Now, once you're moving, 
what you may note is that they're not doing a huge amount, the pilots are not doing a huge amount on the throttles or anything like that, but they are constantly working away uh, to steer the ship as it, as it deals with, with, with gusts of wind and it, direction changes and so on and so forth. So it's constant, constant work for them. They're also, also monitoring the radio and uh, restricted airspace and so on and so forth, of which there is quite a lot. Uh, in France as we make our way towards Le Mans and unusually there is a really strong tailwind so I said that we're doing 31, 33 knots through the air that's true, going much faster across the ground because there's a tailwind pushing us at more than 20 odd knots so the speed across the ground is almost 100 kilometres an hour which is fairly uh, extraordinary <laughs> really and it's, it makes this not the fastest way to travel into a headwind, but with a tailwind, it's cool. It's, it's really quiet in this cabin. It's a really relaxed, civilized, lovely way to travel. And I think it makes a terrific 2020 Autocar Christmas road test. You can find that whole thing, including all of our technical details, in the mag and at autocar.co.uk. And we're here online and on YouTube uh, all the time with car reviews, news, and so on. So we'd love an up thumb and a subscribe. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.